Again on the 11th OVC, the manual of arms according to poinsettes. This time on the 11th OVC, we are continuing with the manual of arms according to poinsettes. Specifically in this episode, we are going to do present arms, support arms, and secure arms. Starting with present arms, the officer orders the following. In order to present arms, the officer orders present arms. At the last part of the command, which is arms, carry the carbine with the right hand opposite to the middle of the body, the barrel perpendicular, the guard to the front, the forearm pressed against the body without being constrained, seize the carbine with the left hand, the little finger touching the upper part of the guard, the thumb extended against the swivel bar, and the band as high as the elbow. Present arms. Then to go back to carry arms, the instructor commands, carry arms. At the last part of the command, which is arms, shift the position of the left hand, bringing the thumb to the front, place the carbine against the shoulder with the right hand, the barrel perpendicular, and drop the left hand at the same time by the side. Carry arms. Now we will talk about how to support arms. In order to support arms, the officer commands, support arms. At the last part of the command, which is arms, detach the carbine with the right hand perpendicularly, four inches from the shoulder, seize it at the same time at the lower band with the left hand, raise the carbine with both hands, turning the barrel to the front, and place it opposite to the hollow of the left shoulder. The left hand as high as the neck, the thumb extended, reverse the position of the left hand on the small of the stock, the flat of the stock against the hip. Place the left forearm on the breast, the cock resting on the forearm, the hand extended on the right breast, the fingers joined, and the thumb separated from them. Drop the right hand smartly by the side. Support arms. Support arms. To go from support arms back to carry arms, the instructor commands, carry arms. At the last part of the command, which is arms, seize the carbine with the right hand at the small of the stock, detach the carbine four inches from the shoulder, place the left hand on the lower band, the thumb extended the forearm along the stock. Bring down the carbine with both hands, turning the guard to the front. Place it perpendicularly in opposite two and four inches from the right shoulder. The left hand a little above the right hip. The right hand shifting its position at the small of the stock. Place the carbine against the shoulder with the right hand and drop the left hand smartly by the side. Carry arms. Carry arms. Now moving on to secure arms, the officer commands, secure arms. At the last part of the command, which is arms, raise the carbine about two inches, seize it with the left hand at the right shoulder, grasp it with the right hand a little below the lower band, the thumb extended along the barrel. Lower the muzzle, bring the butt under the right arm, the guard resting on the hip. The barrel uppermost. At the same time, drop the left hand to its side. Secure arms. Secure arms. Then to move back to carry arms, the order is given Carry arms. At the last part of the command, which is arms, throw up the carbine with the right hand, seize it at the right shoulder with the left hand, and shift the right hand to the small of the stock, as in carry arms. Drop the left hand to the left side. Carry arms. Carry arms. 
So after those last couple maneuvers, they were pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And uh, especially the last one being secure arms was uniquely and distinctly different than the uh, infantry side of things. And so uh, Brandon Lewis, as many of you know already, uh, he was our model, our stand-in for the uh, order of arm or the uh, manual of arms. Uh, so really, just want to kind of pick uh, our brains, maybe actually have a discussion uh, after you know we we read the manual uh, and demonstrated you know kind of what it says. Uh, what was your what your takeaway? Because I know we had to we had to kind of relearn this because it's been a minute for us as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, what was your just kind of just generic takeaway from relearning this? Oh, it's awkward. It's <laughs> really awkward. Uh, I because I started as infantry and there's just enough differences yeah. in steps and pauses and motions that I had to relearn it all of a sudden. Um, so that that was fun, challenging. Well, and, and one thing too that at least I, I keep forgetting is there's a lot of maneuvers that account for the saber being on being on the you know the left hand side of the hip. So for instance, on secure arms, uh, you know we don't. Like the infantry generally goes to the, to the other shoulder and then drops it down upside down. But on this one, it stays in our, our right side, uh, the barrel uppermost, the barrel up versus upside down. It took a while to figure that it took, out. Yeah, it took a while because we just assumed, you know, you know, you'd tuck it in. We thought there was always going to be that flip just yeah. because of my infantry experience and it wasn't there. No, definitely. Just pivot and drop <laughs> it down. And, and then it took us another moment to figure out that why you don't shift like the infantry over to your left side is because you have these things. <laughs> the saber. And it comes up about you know halfway up your side yeah. and there's no space with, with for the, uh, the butt of the carbine to go there anymore. And so that's most likely, that's why I would think it'd be on your right side. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Because you only have to deal with you know your which, which actually is, is the the next thing i was going to say is even in the uh, the or the the drills of even order arms carry arms uh support arms i mean the the ones we've done so far just the pistol being in the way and the saber being in the way uh, as you i'm sure so as you saw in some of our uh maneuvers you know there were some bumps and kind of awkward moments that we have to kind of go up and around that that pistol uh something that the infantry didn't have to deal with Definitely. So when you're all accoutred out, uh, it's it's definitely uh, it it takes a while to get used to and get proficient with the manual of arms. It does. It does. And the other thing that really bothered me is not having kind of that C grip around. Right. The trigger exactly. Uh, and we and instead it's it's this awkward wrap your whole wrist mm -hmm. around it. Um, so that took a lot of getting used to. It's not. Not easy to, to maintain that for long periods. No, and I, thank goodness the, the original point sets manual has those plates, uh, those pictures, because, you know, we kind of, we defaulted, <laughs> we I mean, cheated. <laughs> we cheated. We, I mean, there's a reason those pictures were in the manual, because, you know, you're reading this thing, and especially being on the infantry side of things, you just assume, in your head, you, you think, oh, it's, it's how the infantry did it, especially with that C grip. Mm -hmm. um, but when you look at the pictures, Whoever drew them needed oh, needed to work on drawing. Oh yes, I uh, love the magic fingers. <laughs> the magic fingers. On the side, it looks <laughs> like uh, I'm trying to think how it was. It, like he wasn't the way gripping you describe it. Describe it. You're supposed to hold it like this and hold your carving, you know, thusly. <laughs> but instead, you get a side view, and then it magically just like wraps around, and, and you're you can see that. They're yeah. on the other side. So they're not the greatest of, of illustrators either. No, definitely not the best drawers or illustrators, but uh, th those fit photos definitely helped us in a kind of like light bulb moment of like, oh, yeah, it has nothing to do with it. Had not, like not at all what the infantry did mm -hmm. uh, and is, is more, um, you know, that's because that, that's one thing they don't, just they don't go into the detail you're you're wanting them. They think they're writing it out in detail. It's kind of like having other people write out directions. Yeah. How do you make a peanut butter and jelly? Yeah, sandwich? I was just about to yeah. say that, right? <laughs> uh, and you're like, well, of course, you just do this. I'm sure they thought they were being very detailed, but you know, there's a lot of de you know, a lot of nuances or like like exactly how am I supposed to do this? That uh, when we were doing this video, that was kind of a, a relearning moment for us as, as well. I know for me, it's been. It's been a few years since I've actually uh, studied it, you know, so. Um. That's why I had to be the model. <laughs> you didn't want to get seen. Right? No, definitely not. Definitely not. So, uh, appreciate you guys watching. Hope this is worthwhile for you guys. Uh, and please forgive some of the the uh, bumps and, and awkward moments. Definitely, guys, we don't portray to be perfect at all. We're learning right along with you guys. So uh, appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Please like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, please uh, support us any way you would like to. And until we see you in the field again, ride hard.